Nah, no, you're gonna serve me as your go-between at the student council. Don't get us wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> you will be a better piece of the pawn in the student council. Who's watching? Who's the? Yes, be. Oh, okay. <laughs> She shifts so quickly there. Oh, I don't like her, but that was pretty funny. Welcome back to another episode of Classroom Elite. This is the season finale. And in this channel, we have a tradition where I suit up for the season finale, but still no pants. You know why? Because this is a hobby, not a job. Quick recap before we get into the episode itself. Man, last, last episode definitely gonna be the best episode of the season, right? There's no way. An episode where you have built up Ryuin since season one until now. Also, calligraphy and piano skills from Anokuds that's been hinted since like what, episode two or three when we first like find Manabu kind of trying to beat on Susan. He didn't beat on her, but he tried to do the palm strike. I tried to joke about that. It finally pops off. I would have never expected Ion Koji to be this good of a fighter. I knew that he was competent. I knew that he was very smart. I knew that he's probably very athletic. He showed us how he can run really fast. And he also showed us the grip strength. But it wasn't just that. I'm like, this kid's probably trained in like multiple levels of martial arts. And he showed us that. I'm pretty sure that there were different styles that was happening when he was fighting all four of them against Ryuin. But he wasn't going to, you know, save K. I wonder what flipped. Because... <laughs> He got the text message from, from K saying, and Ryuin, right? No, not K. I think he got a text message. Maybe he got it from both of them. But he was notified that, hey, I have K as hostage and I'm waterboarding her right now. What are you going to do about it? I'm just going to karaoke bar Sakura. I'm like, bro, what are you fucking doing? In the episode before that, it was confirmed that he wanted to step away. He even made such a dramatic call to K saying, this is the last time we'll ever talk to each other. Psych, the next morning, they kind of meet each other in the hallway in the morning. It's kind of awkward. He didn't really say that we'll never talk to each other. But it was more like this relationship of me using you as a pawn, you know, our little secret calls, this game of making this the, uh, the framework. It's over for now. I wonder what flipped. Was it truly just guilt? Was it truly just some kind of fondness for K after you know how, however many weeks have passed in, in the timeline of this show right it's only been like 11 episodes for us but he really goes back I think he should have gone back a lot faster right and at the very end K does seem to apologize but I think Anakoji still fucked up but better that than letting her just take the entire fall I actually thought for a second that she would continue to get tortured and no one would save her and she would still not snitch and then Ayano Koji sees what happens, sees that level of loyalty and decides, oh shit, I fucked up. I need to get back into the game so that nobody gets hurt like this ever again from my side. That was my opinion, but much better way for himself to show up and fight them off. He actually talks to the teacher and Manabu, the te and they're supposed to clean up after mm, the fight itself. I thought for a second he would send the teacher in. I didn't think he himself would go in because I thought we're still trying to, you know, hide our identity. But it's all out in the open. In fact, it almost seems like he wanted his identity to be blown out like this. So then is it fair to assume since the beginning, before he even made the call to K, he wanted to set up a situation where he could really show himself to the fullest to Ryuin and just absolutely crush him to the point he can never even look up again? Maybe? Or was this all kind of spontaneous? It's like, ah, shit, I just kind of got to step up. K got in trouble. I got to step up. It's already too late. I mean, I'm out of show myself. What could Ryuan even do if I just beat him mercilessly, right? I think maybe that's what happened. It's still funny that... Oh, before. Before we go into the fight, Manabu. So, he's retiring, right? He's transferring the power. He's just kind of like an observer right now, you know, playing as a witness for Kushida and now kind of like helping us with this incident. But he also mentioned there's a deal. There's a deal. And the deal is to help Suzune get into, right, the student council. There's a promise he made. I'm not sure when this fuck this happened, but I thought if anything, Manabu would want the promise to be for Ayanokoji himself to join the student council, not Suzune. But that's really interesting that Manabu wants Suzune to become the student council, considering all their past and all the different scenes that we see of him being such a cold brother. But maybe, maybe there is a caring, loving, doting bigger brother deep inside here that he just completely refuses to show. And his only interest is in Yaunokoji in the anime so far. But 
Susan, okay. This is probably setting up for season three stuff, right? Albert, what the fuck was it that Albert, okay. Albert only does one pose. He just goes like this and he only speaks English, broken English too. Anokoji seems to have a pretty decent English for some reason, but I guess Albert's just like a transfer student from like America. I don't know. I thought that maybe Albert and Ryuan were like childhood friends. Maybe they were like family friends together. I don't know what his deal is. I'm not sure if Albert actually speaks Japanese or not. I hope that one day he just actually converses with somebody in fluent Japanese out of fucking nowhere instead of talking that broken English. And I'm like, what the fuck? That'd be pretty funny. Immediately gets in to the room and K is getting waterboarded. Waterboarding is pretty cruel. It's pretty bad. You guys have all seen what it is. In fact, it's been documented as like a war crime, right? There, wasn't there like a case to get that shit banned in America? Waterboarding is bad. I understand this. I recognize this. However, did you notice? Ryuan didn't ever... Well, he did one kick to her in the chest at the end, but he didn't really get violent with her. Physical violence. Punching her. Breaking her arm. Breaking her legs. I thought that he would go that far, but he only waterboarded. So is it fair to assume that maybe Ryuan has a soft spot group for girls? Probably a reach. Probably a reach. The waterboarding is like an intense psychological torture. It's not just physical, but like, you know, it. let me give you two offers. Would you rather get waterboarded by Ryuan or would you rather get all your limbs broken by Albert? I think I know what option I'm going to choose, right? Aonokoji comes in saying, well, uh, I'm here to get K out. And Ryuan's like, yeah, you're just going to walk into the lion's den with no plan. You're just going to take K. You think we're just going to let you? And he's like, yeah. And then Ryuan's like, what's your plan? I have no plan. I'm just here to fucking wipe all of you guys out and take K. It's just as simple as that. Shh. The fucking audacity Ibuki still has to this point to laugh at Aonokoji. I think that's a testament to how well Aonokoji hit himself during the island arc in season 1. And how well we deceived Ibuki. In fact, she never even realized that we were the one that broke the camera. We dug that hole, right? And he was like, what? I thought you were just another EK clone. What are you doing here, right? No, he was a secret master the entire time. However, I can't really shit on Ibuki because I too was completely fooled by, you know, Ryuan and Aonokoji in season in season one of the island arc. Probably mo more by Aonokoji, but Ryuan coming out of the fucking forest, uh, him going Bear Gorillas and like soloing that entire mission by himself. What a fucking god. However, Ryuan seems to be... I will get to that point later. Immediately the fight. I don't know what's going on, but... I don't know what martial arts style he's doing, but I'm just gonna assume that he's learned this all from the white room. It's just a variety of martial arts styles. It seems like Albert likes to box, but we take Albert out immediately. I forget the green haired guy's name. I'm sorry, I don't even know who the fuck he is. Right, he gets out, Ibuki gets taken out, and now it's just Ryuan versus Aonoko, just so fucking fast. And it's so funny that everybody thought he was just like a NPC, just an average dude with no plan. And he's thinking, what, you really think you're just going to take K out like this? And yeah, he did. In fact, the fight gets so one-sided. Ryuan goes from like a cocky way of, wow, you're special, you're good, to like, oh shit, I, I, can't, I can't beat this guy. What, what the fuck is going on? But the most important thing with Ryuan is that his, his persistency, right? He never gives up. Even till the bitter end of just completely getting knocked out by Anakoji. He, he, he just keeps saying, I'm never going to give up. You think you won this? Okay. Well, what about tomorrow? What about next week? What about next month? I'll be there every time. But the most important thing that Ryuan said that kind of backfires in this fight is, I'll, I'll teach you fear. I'll beat you, so, I'll beat you up so bad that you can't even look up to me. Now, I think that's exactly what happens to Ryuan. Ryuan himself declared that he's never been afraid once in his life. Never. Never had fear. When he killed that snake in that backstory, I guess that's how all this kind of started, this cruelty. I thought, I may, maybe the light novel goes into more depth of what happened to Ryuan as a kid, but all we see is just some young Ryuan in his fetal position that I thought might be crying with a snake on the ground bleeding out. Turns out he was just smirking, so I'm like, uh, isn't like children killing young at like an little animals and I guess snakes as a reptile. Does that count as an animal? Reptilian? Whatever. Killing those things is like the first signs of being like a serial killer, right? Obviously, fuck the Ryu in his head, but that's what gives him joy. And that's what taught him the only thing that matters in this world is unrestrained violence. Turns out, Aonokoji can do that violence a lot better than Ryuan. 
multiple punches to the face to the point where I can't even count. And Ryun's like, ha, 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 wow, you're fucking me. Oh, shit, you're fucking me up. But I'll get back. I'll get back. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's the point where you can't even make a face anymore. Ryun's face is entirely disformed. We finish up with a little hammer fist, right? And Aonokoji says, no, Ryun says, let me see that face. Let me see what kind of face you're making when you start to realize that even after this, I'm going to come after you. It's just blank. It's the default Aonokoji portrait saying, what are, you, what are you talking about? This is like, you're nothing to me, buddy. I made this, I orchestrated this entire thing, making you think that you were the one in control. When in fact, it was me in control, making you feel like you're in control, if that makes sense. At the very end, Ryuin can't smile anymore. He's got a completely defeated look in his face. And he does for a split second feel fear for the first time in his life. But I think that's bullshit. I think that everybody... I think he's, he's lying when he said he's never felt fear before. It's probably him just like suppressing it uh, due to whatever kind of childhood trauma he had. There's no fucking way this is his first time feeling fear. If it is, goddamn, he's fucking built different. After this... Someone made a very, very, very funny point in the comment section in the previous video. It's, it seems like uh, Ryuin's gonna be holding Aonokoji's pockets in prison now. If you don't know what that means, uh, gr Google grabbing what it, Google what does grabbing someone's pocket in prison mean? I, I think I think I think you guys get a general sense. Ryuin is Aonokoji's bitch now. I there's no way that he can just come back, try to do the same shit with us when he knows that Aonokoji is the mastermind. But not only that, he's got better violence than himself, right? I think this is poetic justice. He's been set up to be this villain, this antagonist the entire time. And now, the person that couldn't feel fear, the person that said, I will break you to the point you can never even look up to me, has been broken and can never look up to Aonokoji again. Maybe this starts a little subplot of actually, you know, Aonokoji x Ryuin ship, where Ryuin is helpful towards Aonokoji because he knows that he'll just fuck him up. Or maybe he also knows that like, wow, what a competent person in this game that I actually enjoy, the psychological warfare, right? Maybe if I team up with him, he'll help me take out Arisu, who seems to be the one person that Ryuin really hates. And then we save K. And K, the entire time we've been watching, like, holy shit, wait, 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 uh, Kiyotaka, careful, careful, to the point where it's like, oh, 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 wait, Rewin, careful, what the fuck is going on here? She's so cold. Aonokoji gives him his jacket, proper main character, and says here, you were worried, weren't you, right? I promised that I would come to protect you. He does. She never doubted him for a second. Maybe she did, but... I think that she really was loyal to the very bitter end. And I think Aonokoji re like noticed that. And the wording, this is the most interesting part of the episode for me. And because like the fight was it's the, the fight is just a fight. But this one word, right? What he says this will do at the very end, this will do implies multitude of things. The cynical part of me that knows that Aonokoji has pretty much nothing to know emotion, views his friends as tools, right? Doesn't see anyone as a genuine relationship or friendships. I think this will do means that, all right, I've gotten back to Kay's good grace. I've seen how loyal she is. Maybe that, maybe if I didn't save her now, you know, I can't use her in the future, even though I said that I wouldn't play the game anymore. This will do implies that, okay, um, I don't really care about Kay, other than the fact that she's a very useful tool. And I'm glad that I saved her just in time for her not to be broken and be pissed off at me. And this relationship can go on. Nothing about love. Or... Or we delve into the more emotional softness that's locked away in Aonokoji's heart that I'm fucking probably reaching for. I don't know. I just feel like sometimes there's all these human emotions that's just bottled up because of the white room. And he's starting to realize that there's more to the world than what he's been taught. And the more that he starts to form relationships, the more he starts to experience new things, he understands to value these tools as not tools, but maybe friends and not just friends, but maybe someone that he could love. Is that too much of a reach? I still think the first option of where he thinks that I've, I've saved the scenario just in time for me to be able to use K again. Uh, I think I've gained her trust. I think that's more likely. Kind of sad, but I don't think I'm being unreasonable with this take, considering everything we've seen of Aonokoji. You know, all his fucking values and his emotionless stare into the distance as he masterminds his entire series. I think that aligns with his character more than, you know, 
know, a sympathy or love. But anyways, let's start today's episode. Is this where Ryuin lives? Yuki in casual clothing. Ryuin just so fucked up. He's just walking like, what have I done with my life? What? What? He's just having a self-realization of, oh shit. What the fuck happened to me? <laughs> he got fucked up so hard by Anako. Do you think about dropping out? But Ibuki is the one looking for Ryuin. Is he actually dropping out? Wait, wait, wait. Your responsibility would be to fix the situation and come back and lead Class C to Class A. You can't run away from your problems now because you got beat once. Maybe, but you're pretty injured too. <laughs> Why was that so funny? <laughs> he just popped back. Like, yeah. Wow, he just completely defeated though, huh? Oh, wait! Arco was watching the entire time? He's like, no, my true ship, he's leaving. That one can still be useful. He's gonna use Ryuin now. Even though he was using him the entire time, but it's more, it's different. It's more personal now. What is this blushing? Are you starting to realize that you love him? I think we figured that out already, but... Maybe she hasn't realized completely? She never declared it, but... <laughs> You're a couple episodes late, Kay. Come on, I know you want to. He pretty much. It's platonic, right? That's what he said. No fucking way he's there for the romance with her. No fucking chance. Oh, oh. Uh, hello. Uh, don't pick up too fast. Oh, to her, she thinks that she's doing homework for Anakoji to get a better, you know, for Anakoji to have like a better understanding of the date that's supposed to happen. I just hang up like that. No, it, it, no, she's just getting jealous. But, but, <laughs> doesn't even give her a chance to hang uh, she just, she just hung up immediately, but I think that really, this is just a background check to see if she can be used as a tool. But there, yes, 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 that's the one! Where I can also control you and have all the benefits of the student council. Your big bro wants you to do it, surely, if that's the request. That's what I'm saying, that seems really unlikely. Why does he want her to do it? Did he have a change of hearts? We're gonna leak the DMs. Whoa, 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 we're gonna leak the DMs with big bro? But why? Why? Call the Ryu out! <laughs> what is the date? What's up? I mean, his face still got so fucked. Look at all the love marks he put on it. <laughs> What's up? There's two bros being bros. Yes, it was all me. Oh? To take some blame so that Class C doesn't get entirely fucked? Because he's a useful toy. Yes. No. Uh, I don't know. I Maybe. Mean, what do you think? <laughs> to his pawns. So other people forged a stronger bond within Class C to Ryuin, and now we can use Ryuin for better purposes. And if we have control over Ryuin, then we have a better control over Class C because of that performance an issue is it kushida or what mm -hmm. can we really trust her i don't know what to do with her hmm? oh okay the fuck we're gonna go up to class c then back to class d because of kushida or what so the expelling plan still exists i wanted to get that shit done in the middle of season two but Okay, so Kushida really does end up, you know, like as a future plot still. I thought we're done with her. <laughs> Look at Kay holding Hirata's arm like that. Maybe she's trying to, you know, uh, make Anokuji feel jealous. He's like, you see this? I'm holding his hand. Oh, wait! <laughs> she took it off <laughs> immediately. What is it, a date? Wow, just all the fucking montage screens of a date. Anokuji, look... <laughs> It's like crying in the mood. I don't know, Goji. Show something. <laughs> this poker face the entire time. Are you having fun? No, platonic. Platonic. 
I maybe she did have fun, but it's just his face. But when you say it like this with your face like that, Matt. Trust me, he's never smiled once in this fucking two seasons. Has he ever smiled in two seasons? Has he? I don't know. I don't. It's not that I can't smile. <laughs> so hard. How At least he's being honest, but that's fucked. Okay, she makes her move. No, I'm sorry. You're now un you're unworthy. <laughs> I'm sorry, a poor Santo man on Christmas Day. Oh, the snow's falling now. I feel bad for her. Because you're not K. Or I. Hey, hey, hey! Before you call him a dick, at least he's not leading her on. At least he's being honest and cutting it right now before it gets worse. He's being honest. Never had romantic feelings ever. You're quite mature to even, like, admit that, though. This sucks for Sato, but again, again, I think it sucks for her, but it could have been so much worse. I think this is a very. I'm gonna run. <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna run home. But it's better this way, and he's being so <laughs> Of course she was. Okay, now let's go to the legendary tree. I want to know too. I want to know. Can you, can you fucking draw the line between tool and human being? Like, never. Until now. Mm. Yes, this is all poetic scene for you guys. Come on, make your move. This is your fucking chance. The weather is in your favor right now. The birthday present or is it a Christmas present? Because she did get him a birthday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't this from the desk a long time ago when she texted him? Happy birthday. I'm just take it. It's not like I care about you or anything. But I did. Oh. Oh! Wait, what is that? But he's being thoughtful. He's being thoughtful. But you pack a Tylenol. Okay, I think you need to up your standard a little bit more. But okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Where's the legendary tree? I want to see them. Something more than just an exchange of gifts. I want to see him smile. I want to. Hand holding, maybe a kiss, give me something, it's the finale! This will do again. See, this is the thing again, entirely dependent on me. Bro, you planned all this? That wasn't spontaneous. She really had her at the lowest of the low so that this peak gets higher. I, I feel. Dirty man, like this poor girl just getting played like this, and bro, like I I get it, he's the mastermind, but this is too cruel, isn't it? Give me, show me, show me something that proves that you're a human, dude. Come on, let me root for you. There was the butt there. In the end, I'm falling for her. The white room. So why not use this chance to get outside of that mindset? Will this relationship of ours break that? He wants to change. It's not like he doesn't want this to change. Is that the episode? Is that the fucking episode? Post credit scene. Hold, hold. No, no, no. We're not done yet. Wait, 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 wait. No, no. You did not just do a post credit scene for a good night. They'll go back. Arisu? Sakayanagi, why are you here? You're gonna steal the kiss instead? What the fuck? I mean, I wanted something of K and Anakoji, but hello, Sakayanagi out of fucking nowhere. You're, I mean, her dad likes him more than her, I think. The ultimate masterpiece of the white room. She does, she does know about the white room. I'm sure she knows a lot. She's the... False genius. The portal of burning as she fall to me. 
Huh? I don't know. I, I maybe next is third season, and before I do my review as usual, I want to thank every each and one of you for watching Classroom Delete with me since season one, season two, from my old channel before it got terminated, and to my new channel that you guys still came to. Thanks. Every week it's just been a delight. You know, being YouTube, like trying to work YouTube and trying to grow a small channel is really hard. But this is the one fan favorite community series that you guys came out to each and every week to bat for me. And for that, I truly thank you from the bottom of my heart. And we have a new anime season coming up, so I hope to see you guys there. And okay, now, review, review, review. Bro, before we go to the beginning, what the fuck was that at the end? I really thought that, you know, there's a post credit scene showing up. So I'm like, surely they won't bait us with this kind of romantic, you know, dynamics going on with Sato and Anko and Hirata and Kei and then... And then, post credit scene, it's like, bro, really? That's it? Really? The season finale? And then it's like, no, there's a post credit scene of K, and it's just not really anything. It's just like, goodbye. Bye. In fact, Sakai Anagi fucking took control of the scene immediately. So she knows about the White Room, of course, because her dad was literally Papa Anakoji's right-hand man, right? Until he decided to leave because of whatever purposes it is. Maybe he realized this is so unethical. This is so fucked up. I don't want to pursue a future like this. Or maybe he just got a better paying offer from the school. And he's like, all right, I'm out. Beast, the white room can't pay me this much. Sakai Anagi seems to know more. The false genius. Anakoji is re referred to as the false genius. Why is the false genius? Is it as simple as we know that he's a genius deep inside, but he never shows it. He never like, he's always getting 50 on every test intentionally. He's never trying to stand out. Is that why he's the false genius or is there something different that he coined this term from back in the white room? Maybe his behavior was the same in the white room before. But in the white room, didn't it look like the kids were kind of like dropping off one by one if they couldn't perform? Therefore, Anakoji had to perform to the peak before? I don't even know. This is all guesses, but Sakai Hanagi literally said, I am the one to bury the false genius. This is words of hostile intent. This girl, this little crippled girl that can't even walk straight, that has a cane around, be this confident. She's like four foot twelve. Fucking little tiny girl with the heart of a lion. She really bears her fangs, and you know how Ryuin gets pissed off all the time? I think Sakayanagi is something beyond Ryuin, for sure, for sure. And Ryuin kept saying, I will take Sakayanagi down, I will take you down, right? Now, I think it's gonna be a joint operation. Now that we have Ryuin as our pawn, I think we can use him to take out Sakayagi in the future because he has so much resent for her, right? It's a very common goal. Even if we didn't ask Ryuin to help us out, I think he would want to help us out. So this is probably setting up for season three stuff. I guess the main villain, I thought we still have to take care of Kushida, but I'm sure it won't take like an entire 12 episodes to take care of Kushida, right? If she even gets expelled, but he did say that, and of course he did say that I will expel Kushida, right? So versus Sakayagi are coming up in the future season of Classroom Delete that I don't really know when it's gonna be. Th this episode was honestly everything I want. This is such a nice way to wrap things up. You know, we had like the peak of uh, the fights, the episode in the previous episode, and it was very fucking just go, 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 right? But this is more downtime, relaxed, taking care of business of loose ends, even though we didn't get all the answers, right? Ryuin at the end, Man, the way that Ibuki... Also, Ryuin didn't explain. What the fuck did he not do? Like, he said he smiled when he got bit by the snake and he didn't... Did he just do nothing? He just took a gamble and he's like, Fuck it. I'm poisoned right now. I'm not gonna do shit. Was that his decision? Did he go to the ER to get it poison sucked out? Did he bite his own arm and fucking suck the blood out and, you know, detox himself somehow? I don't know. But Ibuki and Ryuin... Is there something there beyond just... You know, I know Albert's, Albert's the right-hand man, so I guess Ibuki's the left-hand girl. They're, you know, she's one of Ryuin's like execs. But is there something more than just professionalism? The way that Ibuki was the one saw, that sought Ryuin out at the end saying, pretty much kicked him in the back saying, fuck you, you jerk. But he, what she's really saying is, don't give up. We're still here. Come on. You don't have to be like this. Kiyotaka was watching the entire time. Just like how Kei would be watching anything that Kiyotaka does. Ryuin, the thing about what Ayanokochi said about how he, how it was actually better for the other people to be there instead of just us fighting is the performance of how he put on such an act to, I guess, his classmates. And maybe I'm interpreting this wrong, 
but I think that the bonds between his execs have deepened. And because they were all there to witness it, and if he still gets back on his feet after this, maybe there's a deeper bond that extends throughout all of Class C. And if he can control Riwen, then it's a much better scenario versus a situation where it was only Aonkoji and Riwen fighting, if that makes sense. Maybe I'm digging too deep into it, but that's the only thing that can make sense of what Aonkoji sent, uh, said by the, I guess, that was better that way. He still denies any um, desire to be promoted to Class A, though. It's just for the sake of his classmates, but I think we can... I think... I think it's... Obviously, he's still... Well, I thought he'd be like, Haha, I'm the mastermind, of course I want to go to Class A, but it's like, he's still kind of skirting around the edges. Nah, I'm just observing, but if it gets my friends to Class A, you know, my tools, then sure, so be it. Ryuan really is going to be helpful towards us too in the future, and I hope he comes to play during the Sakayanagi arc somehow. And because like as much as I enjoyed watching Arisu shit on, you know, Dragon Boy, I want to see the all opposite way around too. I want to see Ryun get one up on Sakayanagi too, right? It'd be pretty fun. But we still have to be in the good graces of her dad, right? Maybe he wouldn't care. Maybe he'd be like, it's all fair. It's all fair. This is the class movie lead it afterwards. So I think that we have a fairly good relationship with Ryuan now. Not that it was ever bad. I mean, we were fucking texting him way more than K, but now it's even more favorable. Right, it's even more favorable. The uh, the other part of this was Suzune going to the student council. I don't know exactly what position it would be. Like I'm sure it's not just some kind of regular student council where you have like I don't know roles like like for example like fucking secretary of finance. I don't know event planner. I f I don't fucking know. But Manabu is the one that wants this, and that's so unlike him to the point where Susan was even like what my big bro said that what the fuck and my Marco was like you don't trust me here here take call him right now he's like oh uh, big, big bro yeah you really want me to go to class student council student council next season oh, okay sure it's like what what's his plan Manabu really just wants a better future for Susan I think that he doesn't hate her I've already talked about in the in, in the previous episode it's not really in this channel anymore because it got deleted but the most important thing about Manabu that I said was Suzune seems to be chasing after Manabu, the big, talented brother that she just seems to not be able to ever catch up to. And while she's chasing, she continues to fuck her own life up. Because she realizes she's so incompetent, she decides to cut everybody off and kind of goes to the Sigma grind. But what happens doing that? She mistakenly uh, assumes independence, sorry, isolation for independence. That's something what Manabu doesn't want her to do. And he probably it probably hurts him to see Suzune struggle like this, only for her to just fall off more and more. But, because, like, I know that, because this is a very common trope between sibling rivalries, but he probably wants the best for her, and that is to not be like me. You gotta be your own person in your own different path. Stop trying to be like me. And I think that's why he's acting so cold, and I think... It's pretty funny. It's kind of fucked up, actually, how he kind of seemingly treated her when we saw her break her ankle and Manabu was like, just like saw her and just walked away. And then Susan was like, no, this is fine. At, at least you stopped for me for a second. I'm like, come on, that's so fucked up. That's so fucked up. But maybe he really does have, you know, the best interest for Susan moving forward. I still don't know what Manab Manabu's role is going to be because he's like graduating soon, right? This is done. He's done class with the elite. I guess he's going to go to university now. We got the other blonde Gilgamesh looking guy that's gonna be student council pres in the future and that should be more fun with the meritocracy system coming on where individuals will be able to rise up despite being held back by their overall class which I think is gonna happen if we're talking about specifically meritocracy. And then the rest of the episode is just uh you know happy go lucky use date time aka get Sato's heart broken and I feel bad, but from the beginning, I said, this is not going to end well. This is not going to end well. Sato only fell in love with Anokoji because he was so fucking fast at track. And if that's the only thing going on, you have no idea what kind of a person he actually is, right? You just saw him flex for a bit. And he's like, wow, that's so cool. I don't blame her, but it was ingenuine at best. If anything, <laughs> Kushida. <laughs> Kushida say, Merry Christmas Eve. And be like, bitch, fuck you, Susan. Merry Christmas Eve. Fuck you. That's like, that came out of nowhere. That expulsion plot, the expulsion plot, will it happen in season three? Will it be handled right away? Or is it something that's going to carry over? Because I don't know what said, by the third term, we're going to go to class C, but then we're going to drop back down because of class, because of Kushida. So if that's the case, if we expel Kushida before that, then maybe we can avoid the situation of dropping down. 
I'm not sure how important that is. And finally, K and Kiyotaka. It's so the 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 line this will do right. It was really just all just calculated. It was just all to make her feel a level of despair, regrets by you know having this fondness, being you know interacting with each other, texting each other, talking to each other, planning, and you know fucking just getting shit done together. It bonded, and then if we just say we're done, it makes her feel like. It's just like a hole in our heart and there's a regret. But if we come back when she's at her lowest and we save her, then she will be forever loyal. I didn't want this to be the situation, but it really was Anakoji just strategizing that way. And that's pretty fucked up for him to do that. I, I like him, but when he shows me all these like such brutal, cold, calculating, inhuman decisions, it's hard for me to really relate to him. But it gets saved because he says this. I'm still like, I I'm still like there. I'm still there. I'm still in the white room in the end, right? I still really haven't changed. And he says, well, this relationship of ours, you know, change this. And that kind of implies that he does seemingly want to change. It's just that he can't help be a cold calculating mastermind that he's just been, you know, I guess. That's, that's all he's ever known since the White Room, and that's the person he is. But maybe he wants to change, and maybe there's a path towards a better future, a bright future, a human future with K, and maybe that's what he's trying to figure out. So in that aspect, he regains my favor of like, come on, dude, are you fucking kidding me? You really just calculated all that into, wait, he does want to change. And maybe with K, he can change. And if he does change, man, I'm not sure if this has happened in the light novel, but a character like this just having those human empathetic feelings if he like i'm not sure if you guys have seen haikyuu but this is the kind of i guess analogy and example i'm gonna make there's a guy you know the, with the tall guy with the fucking glasses that just has no emotional investment into volleyball i know i'm getting fucking off topic here but let's listen but he is so emotionless and it takes him four seasons for him to fucking break down into tears and pop off and that hit so fucking different because of who he was versus him showing all his emotions at once. Oh, that's been built up for four seasons. The same thing with Aonokoji will happen in the future. I'm not sure if it's even happened in the light novel because I feel like that's going to be such a monumental scene for him to actually show emotion. Maybe even cry. Maybe fucking just break a smile. That alone will fucking just... It's just gonna... That shit's gonna go on trending immediately. Everybody wants to see that. And for a character that's as emotion as Anakoji, two fucking seasons without a smile, to show some level of human emotion, man, that will be beautiful. Actually beautiful writing. And that is season two. I don't really know when season three is going to come out, but I'll be here when I'm covering it. And if you guys stick around this long, if you enjoy my reaction, for the fucking 10% of you freaks that watch my fucking 40 to 50 minute videos on Classroom and the you know, Elite just rambling on, I truly do appreciate each and every one of you. For the YouTube algorithm part of the side, this is where I should be doing the outro, but I just thought I'd let you guys know. Um, there's this thing called average audience retention rate and average watch time. Watch time is the absolute time that people spent watching this video. And for most of my reaction videos, the 13 to 15 minute ones versus the 40 minute ones, the watch time is pretty much around five to six minutes. Meaning even if I pump up bigger videos, doesn't really change because everybody wants to see just a reaction and that's kind of a pitfall that I've created myself into because I'm trying to cater towards two different types of audiences. You guys right now that want to hear my in-depth thoughts and analysis doing the intro and the recap and the review, you're, there's like only like 6 to 10% of you, right? Vast majority just wants to see the 10 minute reaction and get the fuck out. It's kind of bad for me to pursue this uh, strategic way in terms of channel growth on YouTube. If I, if for a big video to have the same watch time but low audience retention versus like the other videos where it's much shorter length, but you know, much bigger audience retention because that's the law of numbers. If people watch six minutes out of like a 30 minute video, that's what, what, almost like fucking 50 minute audience retention with the same level of watch time. Obviously that's gonna get pushed by the YouTube algorithm more. But if you've noticed, you're still, Class of the Elite is one of my best performing videos. And it's because even though I have two diverging audiences that want to see just the reactions or just the, re or both the reaction and the review and the recap that sticks around for the entire thing, 
that's why it's pretty much successful. Even though I would argue it could probably be more successful if I just gamed the algorithm a little bit more and just kind of pumped out fucking 13 minute videos like everybody else. I think that gathering a core community of long form video watching is not a bad thing. And I just wanted to let you know, uh, this none of that strategic YouTube algorithm matters to you. I just want to let you guys know if you stick around this long and you've watched all of my classroom elite from beginning to end, every fucking episode since the beginning, since my old channel, and if you're even new here and watching this, I truly do appreciate you. You guys are the reason why I continue to do this. It's the doing YouTube after work, you know, doing nine to five and then coming home. And basically my schedule is, no, nah, I'm, I'm getting really off topic right now, but I, I doubt that many people are watching, so who gives a fuck? Usually I work nine to five job as a software engineer. I do my corporate slavery during the daytime, then I come home. Then from the hours of between six to 10, I'll pump out YouTube videos. And then I about have like an hour or two before it's midnight, then I fall asleep, then I do the repeat, and it's that every single day. And I'm not saying that this is like a punishment or some kind of deep sacrifice, but it is quite a bit of a time investment, right? I truly do love reacting and creating reaction videos and being able to really gather a, an audience around this that shares similar interests, right? That's what I think is truly fulfilling rather than just doing corporate wage slave job that gets money. That's just to pay the bills. But this, this is more like a dream to me. And for you guys to show up every time for this, you've helped me take one step forward to my dream every week. And I hope you realize that. Enough of the parasocial shit. All right, this is where I do the outro. When, anytime that season 3 comes out, I'm sure I'll be there to react on it. But we also have a new anime season coming up. So many different titles from Spike's family. Fucking My, My Hero Academia is going to have a really popped off arc. Chainsaw Man is coming out. Bleach the final arc is coming out. Iruma-kun that I still have to catch up all the way to season 3. There's so many more anime that I'm going to start reacting to. But I hope to see you guys there in due time. Take care.